The PEPOL began in Europe about a decade or so ago as a project to try and standardise procurement documents and to facilitate the exchange of those documents within the EU, uh, particularly around public procurement and government supply chains. Uh, however, since then, it's grown to include not just B2G procurement, but also B2B, uh, with companies e-invoicing each other as well as their government customers. It's now spread beyond Europe into Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, and there are many other countries now at various points of adopting e-invoicing and in the process of considering PEPOL as a means to achieve that. Uh, PEPOL itself basically has three parts to it. Uh, part number one is the, the kind of governance, which is Open PEPOL itself. They are the non-profit uh, made up of membership from public and private organisations all over the world. Uh, and they govern the standards and the network across multiple countries by appointing regional authorities within each jurisdiction. In Australia, the PEPOL authority is the Australian Tax Office, the ATO, and in New Zealand, it's the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, or MB. Uh, these authorities in turn then run an accreditation process to validate and certify which vendors in the market can provide access point services to the PEPOL network within that jurisdiction. So that, that's kind of part number one, it's, it's, it's all wrapped up in governance. Part number two are the PEPOL document types themselves, and these are the specifications or the requirements and standards for the various e-procurement document types, of which e-invoicing is one, and it's the one that we're focusing on today. Uh, this includes the structure and the rules around how e-invoices are formatted and what information they, they must contain. Uh, the third part of PEPOL is, is the network, and this is the the, the medium through which those documents are exchanged between trading partners. Now, usage of the PEPOL network can only be accomplished using an access point to the network, which, as I just mentioned, have to be accredited by an authority for that region. Uh, so say, for example, uh, a European access point can't provide those services here unless they also have accreditation from ATO to do so. Um, so to, to, to use an imperfect analogy that's perhaps becoming a little overused, uh, the PEPOL network is kind of like using a cell phone. Uh, you and the person you're calling can have different handsets, but each of you still need to use the services of a telco before you can call each other. Uh, so it's kind of similar to, to e-invoicing in that you and your trading partner can have different finance systems, but you need to each use an access point service in order to be able to transact over the network.